Hello and welcome to episode episode four of Carvers and Creators. We are streaming live today to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Please consider giving us a like and a follow. Please let us know in the comments uh, where you're watching from uh, or if you have any questions for our carvers today. Um, and look up Carvers and Creators on all of our social media. Uh, my name is Michael Mondragon, and I'll be running the show and moderating the comments and chiming in from time to time. Unfortunately, we do not have this man on as of yet, but he's still trying to get in, uh, Matt Harper. So I will go on to our next carver, who is now carving out of a damp, humid, secret underground layer somewhere in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, he was the 2019 winner of Outrageous Pumpkins on the Food Network. Please welcome Mr. Paul Dever. How are you today? Good evening, everyone. Good to Great be back. Great to see you. And, and uh, how, how much uh, weight have you lost? Uh, body weight and in, in, uh, sweat. I'm down yeah. to about 98 pounds right now, I'd say, <laughs> after the last hour and a half. And also your golf score is pretty much the same as, as you told me today. For nine, yes, for nine. <laughs> I, I broke the course record in the wrong direction today. It's all right. Awesome. And our guest carver today is, is newly from Putnam Valley, New York. Uh, he is a pumpkin carver, painter, and self-proclaimed slightly taller than average. He competed last year against Paul in Outrageous Pumpkins. Mr. Paul Davis, thank you. Uh, John Davis. Oh, my gosh. Uh, John Davis, I got ahead of myself. John Davis, welcome. We we're very happy to have you here today. Yeah, totally happy to be here. It's funny. My brother's name is Paul, too. All right. I was, I was thinking of your brother, even though I don't know him. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming on, John. I appreciate it. No problem. Love this stuff. <laughs> that's great. I'm trying to keep one eye on if Matt is going to jump in. So that's that's what kind of distracted me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Arizona Wi-Fi, you know? I know. Drunk. Exactly. So let me uh, jump in the background and um, get Matt situated, and you guys can uh, show us what you're doing today. All right, great. All right, there we go. So, John, I know you got a late start, and uh, why don't you tell us what you're going to do? Uh, so I'm trying to figure it out right now. Basically, um, it's going to be like a just a real scrunched up face down here, um, and uh, that's kind of all my whole plan for now. Uh, don't really have anything too fleshed out. I'm just trying to get in some of those basic shapes, um, and uh, you know, hopefully it'll just kind of come to life slowly but surely. Well, it usually does, so I can't wait to see how it comes along. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. I have an old, old guy wearing a hood. I guess. Yeah. No, I like that. I like the hood. It, it reads really well. I like to undercut a lot of stuff. Apparently, it seems yeah. to be my theme, and I glued the nose on so that it stands out a little more than normal. I got to figure out how to do hair, though. I, I found I have a, um, a slight hole in my game when it comes to facial hair. I don't ever really carve it, so this is a learning experience for me as well tonight. Yep. So, John, how's the new house? It's a mess right now. Uh, we're working welcome, on it. Welcome to home ownership. I know, I know. Um, yeah, I, I had one day off this week, which is our big moving day. And then um, I've been working like normal, and Terry's been unpacking and organizing everything while I'm there because she's off for the summer. But, uh, yeah, so we've got a lot to do still, but it's been good and fun and all of that stuff I'm trying to figure yeah. out what right now how does now you have a dog right we do yeah yeah how's the dog liking it you have a big backyard or anything she likes it yeah there's a, a a good size yard um but she's i think she's just still a little nervous um but she'll she'll get there <laughs> she'll get there, she'll get there. So now have, you know, you and I have gone on Instagram live multiple times and carved together live yeah. multiple times. Have, uh, I know you've been pretty busy. Have you gotten a chance just to, um, keep up your chops as they say in the last I, couple of weeks? I think the, the last time I did it was, uh, I carved was probably with you. Um, I think it was with you and Matt one time. Um, and then I had to pack the tools away. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you said you just dug them out, right? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. 
Well, I'm glad the tools are back out because Halloween is coming fast. I'm not sure if we'll have anything going on come Halloween, but yeah, we got a we got a wedding on Halloween this week this year to go to. Oh, really? So it'll be so, fun. I'm super excited about it. How does that bode for Chicago if our standing botanical yeah, garden gig no, comes up? Uh, talking to the higher ups about it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I think, you know, it might be kind of um, similar situation to last year. Um, I might be there until the day before. Um, but we'll see. Sort of like my situation last year, too. Yeah, Got to leave a little bit early. Yeah. Well, that's good. Bring, bring a pumpkin or two. You know they're going to ask you for it anyway, John, so I would just prepare for it. I would be disappointed if they didn't. Right. Good point. So, John and Mickey, has did anybody else read the article that the Pentagon released? This is driving me nuts. I heard something about it today, about they actually have found UFOs. <laughs> I heard that there was some uh, article out there. I didn't know whether to believe it or not. I don't know what to believe anymore. I get I, from, from, it's it's unlike all the the real news outlets. Um, so now I want to see what an alien looks like. If that's the case, if aliens are real, let me let me see one. <laughs> well, apparently that's how they make medicine now. That's how they make medicine. You aliens do it. Yeah, that was a, a a doctor that Trump endorsed. Also thinks that um, we make medicine from alien DNA. Can we get a uh, quick cure for COVID so that we can just carry on with our lives, please? Yeah. I mean, that's the point. <laughs> Maybe Money expedite too. that. Yeah. Oh, boy. I almost had the first spill in the new house just now. <laughs> nice. We would have been here for it. That would have been great. <laughs> yeah. So, Mickey, how long before we get you carving? You know, it's so funny that you say that. <laughs> because um, I've been thinking about it a lot. It's really been on my mind. Now, this is the thing that that um, I'm really good at, is trying to do a hundred things at one time. So I would be running the show and carving at the same time. So there's a lot of uh, things that uh, a lot of people don't see in the background while um, while it looks like I might be just sitting here. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background. Like I'm that is a good point. I, yeah. I, I offer that. But I there is a point where I would like to um, get someone in here and I would love to take a crack at it because I've been thinking about it. Like, what would I do? So uh, well, I have I'll tell been you thinking what. about it. I'll make a deal with you. The night that you want to carve. Yeah, I'll run the show. Phenomenal. I mean, I'm already, you know, I'm already skilled in like blowing windows up and stuff like that. How, yeah. how, how much more goes into it? You know what I mean? That's all it is, right? Yeah. That's all it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's so funny. Like, uh, I remember someone bought a, a laptop computer uh, and they say, oh, I got Photoshop. I can do what you do now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you probably can't, but that's nice. <laughs> right. Just jump right into Illustrator. Anybody yeah. can do it. Oh, yeah. So so here's – this is an idea I've had, and I believe very strongly in this, that um, in every Olympic event, they should have just one normal guy competing along <laughs> with everybody else. Um, just for the point of reference. That's just a so somebody to root for? That's a great yeah, I mean, idea. You know, throw, throw – uh, you know, any throw my my dad in a pool with Michael Phelps. Yep. Yeah. You know, just to, you know, just so we can understand how truly good these guys are. That's oh, right. right against the common man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, Michael Phelps beat the pulp out of other Olympic athletes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he kind of drove that point home. Yeah. But yeah, I'd be into that. I'd That's watch some fun. some common That's a great folk. idea. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, you know, Mickey, I, d I don't know what your artistic background is, and I don't mean to disrespect you, but all, I'm, what I'm saying is it's always fun to have kind of that point of reference. Yeah, and, and I, there's really no reason why you would know uh, what I do, but so, uh, so I will forgive you. No, no, no. Uh, no, you, um, much like you, see, you went to art school, correct? 
yeah. uh, and uh, in Massachusetts. So a lot of your uh, painting background, and uh, we'll show. In fact, I'll, I'll even show some uh, while we're while we're talking about this. I can actually show some of the stuff that you do. Okay. Um, and so, like your painting background, your um, your art background, you know, really helped what you what you're doing now. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I didn't get the chance to go to school. And yeah. so straight out of high school, um, I just went with my artistic talent, got a job. Uh, I actually started sign painting for a record store in Phoenix, oh, Arizona. Wow. Oh, that is cool. And uh, from that, I learned desktop publishing and, and uh, I learned Photoshop and I just literally taught myself. And I'm sitting here uh, this year. I'll be celebrating my 30th year of graphic design. Um, I do UI UX, which is... Um, user interface, user experience for Kaiser Permanente now. So uh, I, 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 I'm a big typography nerd and branding nerd. And um, uh, so I do a lot of uh, uh, branding and, and artwork like on, in Photoshop, Illustrator, stuff like that. And uh, but I, I the Adobe suite is everything. Now I'm getting more into video um, and uh, doing that kind of stuff. But but yeah, it's like I'm, I'm noticing that that if the more multidisciplined you are, um, you don't have to know everything, but you just know a little bit about everything. In fact, I even try to delve into some uh, 3D, um, uh, 3D modeling in the Cinema 4D, and that really kind of helped me kind of understand because it's like what you guys are doing is uh, with the artwork. And let me get let me close in on Paul's uh, work right here. So. I can kind of grasp this where before I couldn't really grasp like the concept of doing something in 3D. Right. So I think that really super helps. Yeah. Um, do you think that your, do you think your, 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 your painting background helped you with what you're doing now, even though it's, it's very different? Yeah, uh, absolutely. First of all, um, I think for me the the biggest, the biggest thing was really like, you know, learning how to, like see and really look at what you're trying to do, um, what you're trying to make. And, you know, when you're talking about painting, you, you can have an idea in mind, but you have to know how to really like create illusions. Cause that's what painting is all, all about is like creating these illusions of, um, you know, shape and perspective and depth and all of that stuff. Um, yeah. And the, the difference between painting and sculpture is there's no, you know, there's fewer illusions in sculpture where you're just creating those forms. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, the, just as, as the medium changes, your approach and techniques have to change. But um, I think the big thing is really just like knowing what you want to do and how, and kind of how to make things look. Um, the way you want them to. And it's just, it's most of it is really just the process of learning the different mediums. Yeah. Um, but for, you know, I found that 2D translated really well into like the 3D sculpture for me. Definitely. Yeah, I'd say because your one of your first pumpkin sculpting gigs was happened to be with me, right? In Boston. The first, yeah. The very first one. Yeah. Yeah. So John and I started at the same exact time at the World Trade Center in Boston for the show, on, what was a Night of a Thousand Jacqueline's, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that was both of our, both of us was, it was the first time we had ever carved and got paid. Yep. So. Wow. So it's funny, like actually the way I got into this um, in the first place um, was through painting mostly. Um, a lot of the work we were doing for the Rise of the Jack Lanterns um, was and still is uh, like these illustrated Jack Lanterns that are, you know, everything's hand painted and then we go in and carve out and kind of etch, mostly just like etch out highlights and details. Um, I'm, so, showing, I'm showing some of that on the screen, by the way. Right, yeah, I see that. So, um, you know, it's. In the, at the end of the day, it's really just like a two-dimensional image um, using kind of three-dimensional um, materials. Uh, but you know that was kind of my first introduction into um, kind of like the higher upper echelon pumpkin carving, I guess. Um, and it was through painting, 
Um, and then, yeah, it really wasn't until uh, we had that that day in Boston um, where I was trying to play around with sculpture and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and I, I had, I guess I had done that maybe once or twice beforehand, uh, not especially successfully, but you know, enough to know that I liked it. Um, and uh, yeah, kind of fell yeah. in love with it. And I, and I think that, um, I, I try to explain my, my girlfriend's not very artistically inclined. So, and I, and I said like, like you can draw, I said, everything we're doing is shapes. So if you look at something, it's round or square or triangle or something like that in, in basic form. So then you start kind of whittling it away and it's like, it's almost what you're doing, but in painting, it's exactly the same thing. You're just using it with colors and stuff like that. And, you know, you guys are using the, what would be colors or textures and stuff like that, you know, and cre to create illusions and in depth and stuff like that. So, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I noticed it in your work a lot. It's like, like I, when I saw this stuff, I'm like, I, I kind of had to like look at it again to see is this, are you poking through it or is this on top of it? It's like, it's actually very interesting because it's, it's not probably a traditional approach someone would take. Exactly. So, you know, the way most of those are done, it's, it's etched very, not very, really not very deep at all. Um, this, this piece in particular on the screen now, um, some of the brighter highlights are probably not even half an inch deep. Um, and the flesh of the pumpkins that size is, well, what do you think? Three or four inches usually? Uh, usually, yeah, about four inches. So, you know, we're not carving very deep. Um, so the process to that is, you know, first it's illustrated and then we go in and etch out all the highlights. Um, and then the very last thing we do is hollow it out and uh, really shave the flesh of it down super, super thin um, until it kind of sounds like a drum. Um, so at that point, you know, the thinnest, the thinnest spots um, from the inside all the way to the outside is, you know, maybe a quarter inch. And that's what lets the light shine through. Uh, because it's just a transparent material. Um, so we, yeah, we don't cut all the way through on those. Just, uh, just it's kind of just like the thinner the material it is, the more light it lets through. Yeah, it's fascinating. And, and uh, you know, next time we have you on, maybe you could kind of show us the techniques as to how this kind of works. Um, yeah. Because it's really fascinating to see a different style in pumpkins as well. Right. Well, I have good news for everybody. Matt oh. Harper has made it to the show. Yay. Hey. Good question. How you doing, Matt? I'm good. Can you hear me? I can yep. hear you perfectly. Oh, all right. Well, then all problems solved. Nice. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, and, and esteemed guests, I feel... Uh, I, 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 I'm not... No excuses. My computer, I, I think I know how to use them, but... I, I, for the first time, put Teams on my um, laptop, and apparently there was a, it was trying, it was fighting with what I was doing here today to, um, you know, it was taking the, the camera and the sound at the same time, so it was like this mile-long delay, so I had to kind of restart everything, so glad to be here, and um, glad to and have you. super glad John's here, and of course, Paul, and and then, of course, Mickey. Yay. Glad very I'm just wiping off the sweat myself, uh, Paul. I was able to listen to hear about you. Uh, it's only 106 here today, so thank God I'm for for uh, um, air conditioning. But um, but I can. You I, had to watch me topless tonight. I was, Come on, shirts and skins. I, I put a shirt on right before we came on because I was actually dying. It, it's so hot. You would have thought that the rain would have cooled it off, but the sun came right back out and laughed at us. Crazy. <laughs> Hey, so this would be a great time as any to uh, say cheers. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, of course, Matt, glad you're at AOL. Dial up is working again. <laughs> yes. Salud. What's everyone drinking? I am indulging in cloud candy from Mighty Squirrel Brewing. In okay. uh, it's a fancy, fancy can. It is wow. a fancy can. And my bear's fancy too. Mm. For a fancy lad. Aye. <laughs> Who's next? Mickey, no drink for you, huh? Uh, not true. 
I oh, have uh, uh, we- Weekend Vibes IPA from Coronado Brewing. Ooh. It's, a, nice. uh, it's one of my go-tos um, that has, uh, it's right, it's a Coronado Island, so it's right off, right, I guess, south of uh, San Diego. So you have to take this little, I think, Matt, Matt we've, went, we've gone there before. I, I thought we, mm-hmm. back when, long time ago. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's like one of my go-to beer companies here for San uh, Diego type beer. Now, is it a hazy? Is it a hazy IPA? It's just a straight. Um, it would be considered uh, like a real a real West Coast IPA. So it's kind of um, it's not cool. uh, it's super it's... hoppy, but um, it has like mosaic, citra, and Simcoe hops. So that's that's like a good combination for me. So, wow, you, yeah. you can listen to you snobs. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew that there was hops in mine. That's where I drew yeah, the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What kind of hops it was. But you don't know them by name, and I, I understand. No, no. I know them by taste, though. Yeah. You know when you're drinking an IPA. That's right. I I, I pulled out a, this cup today for for no reason, just because I thought it kind of looked cute. The devil awesome. guy. There we go. Well, that's pretty and, cute. And yeah, put, yeah, yeah. I wanted, a, I wanted a cute cup, and I think that might have cursed me. That's what was the, the problem today. <laughs> I, uh, I filled it with, uh, with the whiskey and Coke, so, you know. It's right on. Huh? Pulling a Lemmy today. Nice. And what you got there, John? I know you always got something going. So, uh, you know, I'm not much of a beer drinker myself. However, I am finishing up a Modelo Especial, oh. Uh, oh. which I kind of I kinda like those every once in a while. Um, but I uh, I was recently turned on to Screwball. The, oh, the peanut butter. It is mint. It is pretty good. It's it's a little sweet if you're a, if you're a whiskey fan. Yeah, it is pretty it, good. It just tastes like a nice cocktail, though. Yeah. Yes, Lenora is a big fan of the uh, screwball as well. What what is it? Um, it's just like a, a, a peanut butter whiskey, is what it's called. Um, oh, awesome! It's, this is I'd what, say it's more of a liqueur, right? Would you say that, John? Sure. Okay. Yeah. It does. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't even know. Would you say it tastes like peanut butter? I don't know. It tastes like some type of candy that I've had before. I don't know if peanut butter is the first thing that comes to mind. Um, but it is good. It is pretty good. I think it's like a 35%. Yeah. So, so, so Matt, what? Um, before we get into what you're carving, um, wow. Paul said that he would run the show if I do a carving on a show. I like that. I'll, I'll sit in the background and do squats. I don't know if that helps anybody, but I don't I, you would lose some viewers. But no, I, dude, I, I would love to see you uh, uh, take a crack at it. In fact, this is the right time um, to be doing what we're doing because pretty soon people are going to be sitting in front of their YouTube, uh, you know, whatever screen they're watching it on, and you know, sitting in front of a pumpkin. So we should, we should even do, uh, you know, like a hey, let's do some steps together and. You know, uh, with the, with the rest of the group, because pumpkins are going to start coming, and you know that uh, that hundred days till Halloween is coming gone. So we're uh, we're getting right. closer every day. And I and I already have my tools. I literally ah. was doing some. Uh, I have a whole tool set because I started getting into the. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly what it's called, but the it's a it's a foam, so you can actually start carving like a I have a block that you can get at Blick. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bl- blick block. I've yeah, so I, I started like uh, started carving out of that. This was oh god, I'm like four or five years ago. But I have a, a whole tool set, so I'm I'm like ready to go. Nice. Right on. Yes, that uh, I know. I know that uh, Daniel Miller was able to procure a couple of pumpkins, but I haven't I, seen it. I'm trying to grow them in my backyard, and I'm failing miserably because every time I one pollinates and starts to grow. The chipmunks and the groundhog yeah. have have at it, so uh, mine will be all store bought this year. Unfortunately, I, I took a run at it this year too. I tried to get my um, tried to get I got the good seeds from last year of the pumpkins I liked the most, and 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 put them in little things and watch them grow to this big, and then um, put them in a bigger thing and watch them grow so they had actual leaves and. That's how good of a. Um, I think that's about where it's where it finally died. It, it, what happened is in Arizona, apparently, it's it way too hot for these things. However, some of the best pumpkins I've ever had are out of Wilcox, Arizona, where the 
if, if it's the temperature doesn't get to like the 90s and, and above, then you can, um, I think you can grow them okay as long as they're, you know, tons of water. But I have never, I, anyway, I'm, I go and water them all the time and just cry over them, give them a few extra tears just in case they want to use yeah. that for nutrients. But so never, never works. That's a good idea. I was going to ask you, how, mu how much on average does a pumpkin, I, I, I don't know, like a 12 inch pumpkin, how much w water would that take? I couldn't even tell you. I know it's a lot because they don't seem to grow unless you water them constantly. Yeah, they, here, here um, if we don't sometimes get them twice a day, they start to, their, their leaves start to, you know, wither. So I've given up, but um a lot, Mickey. I think that's the only answer I can throw at it. Yeah. 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 So when I see those huge ones, I think of like whatever, you know, whatever a 12 inch one would be multiply what by four. I mean, that, I mean, that's a ton of water for those huge yeah. ones. Yeah. A little, little water bill there. Yeah. So how come pumpkins aren't like a uh, hundred dollars then or, or, you know, or like $500 if it's I so, know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the big ones are. Yeah, are they? Yeah, they're expensive, yeah. I mean, when, once you get up to like, um, once you really get close to like 100 pounds, they can be a dollar per pound. Um, Makes sense. So when you see like the 500 pound pumpkins, realistically, it's probably at least $500. Yeah. That's a lot of money to be to, to be cutting apart. Yeah. So you got to have a good design in, in mind that one, you know. And a lot yeah. of it because you might want to hang on. So you might want to have a swimming pool on hand too. Uh, so. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so show us, Matt, what you're doing. So um, if you guys have uh, – so I'm going to make sure I can get some good lighting here. Oh, nice. That's awesome. so I, I did a guy – I'm thinking of like sunglasses. I, I Originally, I'm planning on cutting these and making eyes behind them so they look like he's just wearing the frames. But I, he's kind of a Chad. Um, <laughs> he's kind of got a little, little bit of a, a – oh, Self-portrait. Yeah, uh, I might make this into like a uh, one of those really cool um, Scooby Doo beards, you know? Awesome! Oh, the soul patch, a little soul patch for this idiot. Um, and then I got to figure out his teeth. So it, I got a ways to go, but um, but it's been fun. I, I was actually using my glasses to try to determine what these glasses were going to look like, and and I was using the edges of them to you know to scribe along the outside of the thing. Um, so very rudimentary way to do it. I'm sure there's probably measurements and markings I can do, but you know, next time. Yeah. You know what? It's speaking of rudimentary, I'm trying to do hair here and I know you've done a couple with beards and stuff. And I was wondering what your process is. Yeah. I so, do no, I, I, I'll give you my little, my little walkthrough and I, I can do it with the chin of this guy. How's that? Well, I'll, I'll try it. Show so me. The, only, the only thing I do is I kind of I round it into the shape. Let's say this is going to be his little soul patch here um, on top of his chin and see if I can kind of center that. So um, I round it to the shape where I think the hair is going to be at its utmost. And then I get I get this tool right here, which mm -hmm. is the let's see if I can put it up there. Maybe that better. No. Yeah. See that tool? Just mm -hmm. something sharp. Yep. Yeah. The, the small one. Um, and then I, and then I just take, you know, kind of, I, I use this to make a few immediate, um, kind of gouges of, to, to, to rough out where the hair is going to be, um, kind of undercutting it and, and that kind of thing. I think you're doing the same thing, but eventually, um, I'm going through with a knife and I'm making kind of the small, more squirrely cuts inside there to, to, to make it a little deeper and add some flow on, on some of the beards that I've had be curly. I, you plan those out early. So you kind of know where that little curl is going to be. And you just leave that, even if it's sunken a little bit deeper into the thing, you just don't want to knock it down first. So, um, if it's going to be wavy or if it's going to be coming away from the face and the very last thing I do is I, I'll take the area that's not the hair, and, and give that an extra shave down so it emphasizes it makes it stick out even more but that's that's it i mean i'm yeah oh very cool yeah no no I mean, uh, i'm good at hacking away at it i just i gotta figure out no problem hacking away yeah, yeah we, I, 
so Matt, Paul and I were talking about it earlier. I think like um, kind of like the academic approach to like carving hair is really to think about it as like a solid form um, and kind of bigger forms. Like the, kind of the way you do it with, you know, mostly everything else. You kind of want to zoom out before you really zoom in and work on those details. Um, you know, so like if you're like if you're doing I'm not doing hair on this thing, but you know, you'd want to think of like the larger locks have the way they would like flow down. Um, and then the very last thing you do is really start to define those like smaller strands. Yeah. 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 I like that. I've, I've um, started with a few of them trying to give them beards and ended up, they didn't have a real big beard or no beard at all because yeah. I just, you know, screwed up on it. So yeah, it's just, it is, it is, it just takes a little bit of, trying them over and over, but yeah. Thanks guys. I'll figure it out, I hope. And if not, like Matt said, he just won't have a beard. Yeah, he's a cake. Yeah, we got a checkerboard? Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. Um, that's yeah. a chessboard. Oh, wow. Well, it's a chessboard if you're playing chess. It's a checkerboard if you're playing checkers, Matt, actually. Yeah. All right, all right. So this is really interesting to me. Do, do you think that, um, were you doing this before or were you just, is this more the evolution of you doing more kind of 3D type of projects? Yeah, this is this is kind of um, one of the more intricate woodworking um, projects I've, I've done. Um, this was more recent than most pumpkin carving. This was just uh, last uh, December, I think, we finished it up. Um, so I actually, I guess that now it's about a year and a half ago, I started working at a frame shop down in, uh, Yonkers, uh, New York. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd always been interested in, in woodworking, um, but I've never really had much, um, experience with too much of it. Um, so, you know, after about, just about a full year of, making you know all sorts of intricate like solid wooded uh, custom frames i wanted to try some other more interesting projects um, and uh that, you know I, I love doing that stuff too it's it's funny it's so different I, I find um it's a much more precise art form where everything has to be measured carefully mm -hmm. um it's kind of like baking you know this is uh it like you just, once you have a recipe or like a plan, you really just have to stick to it. Otherwise things aren't gonna work out as well. Um, but uh, yeah. No, that's very, that's very interesting because I, I, I say that like, I would figure this is like, I say uh, coding. Like if, okay. if you have a, a, a line of code that's like one character could be off, your code won't work. But for what what we're doing in painting and you're doing in sculpture and and other things, you can actually take license with it. Like, you know, it becomes what it becomes. But there's not a steadfast rule. Yeah. But there's rules to it. But there's you still have to evolve it. So like something something like this, like if if you don't do it right, not, not, the things won't fit into each other, and it it'll be noticeable. It's very interesting. Uh, did you have a pattern for this, or did you just? No, that, you just do it on your own. I, I did that one on my own. I had drawn up a couple of preliminary sketches. Um, but, you know, I say it's like baking, but there's a lot of figuring out as you go. Um, but, yeah, I had a lot of fun with that project. Yeah, it looks amazing. Thank you very much. Have you done anything, um, John, that, that is wood but but just pure art? Um, where it's kind of almost freeform carving on on wood. No, not not so much. I've done a little bit of carving with uh, my job, where it's you know we need like a specific details or um, decorations on some of the more intricate frames that we do. Um, but yeah, not not really any sculpture per se with wood. Okay. Not not for any reason. I would like to, but I just haven't. Yeah, when you're moving into a new house, even that takes a way back seat. Yeah. Matt, have you done any uh, as far as wood carving? Nothing, um, 
nothing really um, that I've saved and liked enough to show people. I mean, I've goofed around with it, but it's um, it's always been it's always been just kind of like I need to do more. In fact, actually, all three of you can answer this one. So you have people all the time asking you, "Oh, if only you could do something permanent. You know, you we, you could sell it, and that you know they're your biggest advocates and everything." But at the same time, it's like, yeah, um, it's not why I do it. Um, you know, there's, there's that argument as well, but, uh, I certainly get that a lot from like my mom or somebody who's just, so she'll say, Oh, I'd, I'd love that face. If only it was, you know, on a stone or wood, we could save it forever. Sure. And, uh, you guys get a lot of that. I've had a lot of those types of conversations and, um, I think it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because art galleries exist, you know, and there's tons of sculpture there. But when you go to like a Jack Lantern Festival, um, it's a completely different crowd. You know, I think you get a lot of kids, you get a lot of people that, you know, have probably, you know, maybe go into a museum, you know, once every three or four years, and that's about it. Yeah. Um, I think the reason pumpkin carving is kind of as popular as, as it is, especially at like the elevated, as like an elevated art form is because it's so relatable because everyone's really everyone's carved jack o' lanterns before, you know. That's really, yeah, that's really well put. Yeah. So when you're able to get like take a medium that everyone is somewhat intimate with, and you know, really elevate it, it there's like a certain level of magic involved, you know. And <laughs> that's why you get those responses. you are like, "Is that real? You know, is that really a pumpkin? How did you do that?" And mm -hmm you don't really get that at, you know, a, a gallery or a museum. Right, you get critiqued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, because every kid every kid that I've ever known has at least once carved a pumpkin or tried to, so that's a good point. Well, I know, I know, Matt, when we talked about kind of like what, where you wanted to take your business of pumpkin carving, like we had to have some kind of hard discussions about like like what is it that that you can monetize from pumpkin carving, and I don't think it's making pumpkins because you'll like lose your mind, right? Uh, I think it's it's maybe teaching or or technique or doing these other things. Teaching is definitely the main thing, if if you want to. Did I did I? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm sorry. Did I lose you? Sorry. No, I'm, I'm listening. I just, I, in fact, I I totally agree with you because I, um, anyway, I, I feel like, I, I, I know everybody here isn't, had, hadn't had these conversations, but I feel like I've had them so many times with everybody, I, you know, especially other pumpkin carvers. It, I, from my core, I just love to do it. And, and I'll sit here, um, w you know, with a beer in hand and, and headphones on and, and for, you know, get lost for, for hours just making something fun and, and just for me and um and i know that's hard to monetize or sometimes people just think you know what well, well just sell it you know just sell it to somebody if you're going to just throw it away anyway um but but i it just doesn't you know i got a day job so it's for me it's um this is just like an almost an escape and i would i think i'd risk um not liking it if all of a sudden everything i made had to be you know perfect or something so it would become a job. Yeah. It'd become a job. Yeah. I, I understand that one fully. So Matt, I don't think, I don't know the story of how you got involved in uh, this level of pumpkin carving. Is there much of a story to it? Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> in, boys and girls. Hope you guys have an hour. No, it's, this is, it, it, it started the same way most everything else um from an art perspective uh i i just i love to um sculpt with like metal and um and well i'm trying to think of the different mediums i did like a giant 12 foot gila monster out of concrete one time for a school oh. and like, like those kind of things but i never really ever dabbled or played with 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 pumpkins before um in this kind of way um and then my daughters were born and you know, over the years, we'd do the pumpkins with the triangle eyes and that kind of thing. And then it became, all right, if I can do eyes, I can do teeth. And, and it kind of moved on from there. 
Yeah. Um, but then I've kind of got this in my head where, you know, I can, this one isn't good, so I got to do one better. And if that one isn't good, I got to do one better. And I'm, a, I'm my own worst critic. So I just keep, you know, I keep hating what I've made. And um, until people started being like, oh, I, that's pretty cool. I, I kind of like that one. Or, and then I started coming around to it too. And, but yeah, it's nothing more magical than that. I was just a perfectionist wanting to get better at, you know, doing a jack o' lantern at uh, Halloween. And then, and then, Paul will say this too, but like I, I saw Ray Villafane's stuff and I'm like, okay, now I want to do that. I want to try to do something that is that realistic looking. Um, so then it was just kind of on from there for me. So when was it that you saw some of Ray's work? What's that? When was it that you saw Ray's work and really? Um, to, to, yeah, I, I think it was about seven or eight years ago. Yeah. Around the time he did the one that had the, the, the hand, his hand on it and the squish in the face. Yeah. Um, and it was in like a, I don't know if it was a newspaper or some, somewhere online, but that was like kind of really altering for me. And um, and then I found out he lives in Carefree, um, which is also in Arizona. And uh, and I signed up for one of his classes. Oh, cool. And, and so I got to, and there was only like 10 people, 15 people in the class and he brought pumpkins for everybody. And then spent you know half a day kind of walking us through his techniques and what to look out for and and by then I'd already had you know 20 30 of them under my belt so I was feeling better and then came home just like jazz like I could I could start to figure out what an eye would look like or yeah. why you know facial movements so I did you know more studying and stuff like that but yeah that was around origin times. Right. I'm gonna solo Paul because I saw you were doing some eye stuff. Oh, that's yeah. awesome! It's the the eyes are really small. It's um, it's a challenge. It's a really teeny tiny button yeah. squad. I just love the depth of the the forehead into that. You know that what and what what did you call that? Like a ridge? It's the hood. The hood, hood. You call the hood. It. He's yeah, he's a I like throwing hoods on the, the pumpkins and the squashes. So, for so neat. Thanks, pal. Yeah. Speaking of, that's, that's where I, that, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm contemplating how I would approach these things. So, um, I noticed like Matt put his tools down when he was talking. I'm not sure if I can do that. I, I feel like I have to be concentrated on that. Will I lose that or, or will I be, get a comfortable? Once I get comfortable, I'll be okay with that. With what? Uh, what like multitasking yes yeah you're running a show right now and talking but you're pretty good at it actually yeah okay so it's so it's like that okay yeah, yeah. The thing of it. i mean it's just like you know like, again paul and i kind of started doing the um well wow. yeah i guess we did a little bit more sculpture beforehand but you know we still kind of did most of our sculpture in front of crowds yeah um, yeah, that's new for me. You get really comfortable with that really quick. Well, you kind of have to, I guess. So do, yeah, you, worry, what, do you worry about time when you do that? Um, we usually have plenty of time with the format that we are accustomed to. You know, we kind of start, um, I guess, like 5 or 6 o'clock. And it the, the, they usually go till 10 or 11. So you got, you've got time. Yeah, and if you don't finish, usually the event is a couple of days, so you use that as your opportunity to go in the next day and really polish it up before people get there, so you can really finish it out. No, not to mention it's it's really like the the process is kind of the important part when you, there's people watching you. I saw that in the time lapse where you guys left it and then you came back the next day, so that was that yeah. was kind of revealing to me. Yeah, and I found that when you leave one and come back to it, you, you 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 find things you didn't see in it before. And it's pretty vital to making it better. Yes. Um, walking away, coming back. I mean, like any art, but right. uh, that's certainly a, a great. You're like, oh my god, I didn't see that before. Look at that, terrible. Yeah, John, on the show, actually, you you um, you focused on that a little. You made it a point, and it kind of stuck with me, which was take a step back every couple of every yeah. Couple minutes and see what you're doing and i'm like huh maybe i should try that at some point 
just get in there and I'm like, holy shit, this thing is way off. No, it's it's totally true. I so I, I taught at a, uh, a high school for like a year, not even. Um, but and but I think really like the most important thing I've ever been able to get across to students is just like like take a minute and just look at what you're making with as fresh eyes as you can possibly get. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because especially you know younger or newer artists. You know, they focus on details so quickly um, when that should really be the last, honestly, least important part of the whole process. You know, I think like like if you get a good foundation and good structure, what if it's sculpture, like if you get a good uh, structure and just like a lot of those general shapes down, um, it's going to look good whether or not you kind of botch the details. You know, you could spend 10 minutes on you know, whatever details are. Um, and if you, you had a good start, it'll come out great. So, so, the, uh, you, so you talk to students and uh, other people about this as well? Um, a little bit. I guess I, I'm maybe more thinking about, uh, you know, like drawing and painting. Um, mm-hmm. but it's all so closely related. Yeah. Because um, I, I do a similar thing. Like I talk to... Uh, I talk to students and um, people that are, you know, in every d- discipline of graphic design. And one of the things that I tell them is that um, you have to have a plan. If you don't have a plan and you're just winging it, it's going to take a long time. But if you actually uh, do the research and like Matt did, like he was using his glasses as reference, he knows what he's trying to make. That makes it a lot easier. Um, Why couldn't you have told me this last night? <laughs> <laughs> Where, now, like now, Paul, do Paul, do, do you do you wing it more than you plan? Yeah, I do. Yeah, same here. So, I mean, but that that's that's a, also a great lesson too. It's like, one, but once you're good enough to do it, you can wing it. Someday, I hope to be. I mean, see, I, see, you don't even think you're good, and you're winging it. Oh, I am broken winging it at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really, I give up halfway through on trying to figure out where it's going and just keep carving until, until I can't carve no more. That goes back to the conversation we had a couple episodes back about how much time do you spend on one? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes that's, and it's to what you said, you'll get to where you're going a lot quicker if you have an idea of where you want to go. Yeah. If you don't, you don't know, you don't know where to, to, to call it quits. But I think you guys said it well it's like you guys use this it's kind of like a mental escape and it just kind of goes where it goes so in that case you're not trying to go to a destination so it's the journey that's it the journey journey. i just um i'm involved in a typography course and and calligraphy they're doing it as a a type of meditation so this could be uh, meditation as well i could see that yep that's pretty cool what are we gonna say matt Whole, uh, art, art therapy, therapy business is about the whole art what art therapy yes oh yeah yeah no i i i just was going to change subjects because i i got to show you what i what i found i'm going to carve it next week i think <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone yep whoa holy cow oh boy what is that <laughs> Come on, baby. That's a big piece of rice. <laughs> wow. This, this thing is a banana squash. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. Oh, God. So God. that's it close up. And here's it next to my head. It's, oh my God. it's big. And it's. Do that again. One. Which one was your head? I couldn't <laughs> tell. Hang on. This one. Yeah. It's good. All right, yeah. No, sorry. Sorry. It? That's how you know. Yeah. Wow. I was. Uh, I was. Whoa! I was perusing the uh, aisles of uh, Safeway to, to get today's butternut, and I saw that thing, and I'm like, "Oh crap! I get, I gotta buy it." I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but you know. Yeah. No, that was cool. That's the first time I'd ever seen like that—a giant banana squash—and they didn't even know what it was at the at register. I'm like, what is? <laughs> Let, oh, here's a here's a question: How much did it end up costing you? Oh it shit! Like That's the worst months. part. So I don't even know what it's like inside or what it's like to carve or anything like that. I think I spent like 18 bucks on it. You know, so I'm, it's not terrible. No. No, it's not bad. It's just. You can afford it. 
I know. He's got all the money in the world. <laughs> yeah. He's got disposable <laughs> income. Yeah, I've got yeah, I dispose of it all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's flush. <laughs> I'm really good at that. I just looked it up, and a banana squash is actually, they call it a paper thin squash. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Thanks yeah. for looking it up. Hey, you're, you're quick. <laughs> you might want to start right after this for next week, to be honest, because that thing looks like it's going to take a while. Yeah. Well, I I don't think it's, I don't, the beautiful part of like a butternut squash, these guys are solid at the top and they just have a little pocket of air at the bottom. So I'm getting spoiled. So when I get to pumpkins, they have a big, it's just a big air ball sometimes inside uh, where you can go pretty deep and make some cool stuff out of the top of these. That thing I think is just a big long cylinder inside of air. So we'll see, but I'll yeah. try it. Yeah, Looking forward to seeing it actually. I, I kind of feel like we've gotten spoiled with these in a way because they're solid at the, at the, the, the smaller tapered top. Yeah. Where they're just, you can just dig right into them. That's why I started carving them upside down was because you can do all those teeth and you can do a tongue and a yeah. back of the throat <laughs> and you're never going to punch through. It's just one solid mass. Yeah. I'm kind of a little, I'm a little bit nervous. I think I'm going to get a little ambitious on the first couple of pumpkins. I'm going to have to remember that there's a, um, a threshold. You can yeah. do that. You know, but the nice part about the early season pumpkins are going to be so thick and fresh. You know, people ask me, you know, how do you pick a good pumpkin? And, and if you get them early, you're going to, you can't not get a good pumpkin because they're going to be the ones that are, they're heavier than they look. And that means that they, that they have a lot of water. So they're thicker. And then when you carve them, they're just beautiful. And then when, if you save a bunch and you're starting to carve them in December, when you bought them all in, you know, September, October, then you start seeing all that mealy crap and the, the walls get real thin. And stuff. That's true. The perils of pumpkin carving. Uh, Jim says, uh, Matt, that banana squaw screams for an alien carve. Ooh, I mean, Jim, I like that. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. So that's, how long do you have? How, how long will that keep? Um, I've still got butternut that I've had, you know, for a month. Um, they, they get a little weird, but uh, not. I, I, I think, you know, if I keep it in the house, not outside where it's 110, um, for the next week, it'll be fine. Probably the same. And yeah, then, that'll know, be interesting to see what? how they keep. So I, I, the butternut squashes will stay forever. I yeah. lost, I lost a Kaboka squash though. I, oh yeah, too long. Yeah, so those don't have the same shelf life. They change um, color too, right? The what's that? The Kabokas will really kind of change color as they go through their ripeness stage, I believe. Yeah, you're right. It was a completely different thing. So yeah, the the butternut squashes are probably the best thing I think I've had a chance to carve yet. Yeah. Until Matt comes back with the feedback on the giant banana squash. <laughs> and and then I gotta find I gotta ask my produce friend, hey, I need to get get you know, find me a pallet of these things and I'll I'll pallet get them to you guys also. Pallet of banana squash. So I wanna get Hubbard squash trainer. Hubbards are awesome. Red Hubbards are just my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I want to get in on those this year. I like the blue ones because I, I like that. I like the colors of that so much more. I think. Yeah, you get those like the nice gray um, rinds, and then you get like all sorts of like green to yellow green. Yeah. inside. Yeah. yeah, and the deeper you go, the more uh, bright that orange becomes. It's it's really neat. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I'm jealous. I've only gotten to do one. They, I don't. I really can't find them around here. They certainly don't sell them in the supermarket. I found you guys, one at, like you guys the, have sprouts out there, or like Whole Foods or Sprouts usually have them. Sprouts. I don't know if we have a Sprouts. We have Whole Foods. The the best luck I've had is um, just like some local uh, like pick, like apple picking or like pick your own pumpkin things. They usually have. Uh, I mean, not usually, but I've seen some Hubbards hmm. kind of thrown in with like the. The variety of like odd colored pumpkins, and usually with like whatever the big ones they've got too. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's where I keep finding them. Not so much at like farm stands, but we have like um, uh, like not landscaping supply, but an you know an outdoor flower store that sells like a nursery. Yeah, a nursery. Like that's nursery. Where, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they usually have it on that table of oddballs. There'll be a couple thrown in. 
Yeah, around the time when the, you start seeing all those ones that, you know, for fall scapes that they put on Thanksgiving tables, all the really, you know, weird knuckly looking ones. Yep. That's, that's when you see them too. Yeah, that's true. So, John, have you scoped out places around your new house? Oh, good question. Uh, we're, we're somewhat familiar with the area. Um, so we've, we've got a few in mind, but we haven't really gotten much of a chance to explore too, too much lately. Uh, but I think that that one farm I was talking about is probably within 25 minutes um, from here, where, where I do find those, uh, uh, what, what's it called? Um, Hubbard? Yeah, yeah. So, 25 minutes, huh? You're really in the middle of nowhere. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. We're kind of like in the middle of everything and the middle of nowhere at the same time. Uh, that's right where I want to be. It sounds yeah. like bliss. So it's like you're we're 20 minutes away from everything, and I mean everything. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you got to plan your grocery shopping then, huh? And I you know. Build. Uh. I always stop on the way home from work, though, which is good. This is a fun challenge. I'm, I'm trying to cut these straight, you know, glasses now without ruining them um, and carve underneath them. I mean, there's really no reason to do any of this crap because you, you pull it off without carving underneath it. But it's just I look at it. I'm like, you, you got it. That's got to look right. You can't do yeah. that. Yeah. And if you create that little uh, separation in there, it's just that gives a lot of depth. Yeah, and if if the light or the angle you hit it at, you know, you, you want to have, be able to see that. So, mm -hmm. silly, 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 silly pumpkin carvers. <laughs> yep, you just you go in the extra mile, you know. That's so I, I want to go back to what we were talking about before, like the either planning it out or winging it um, when it comes to the sculptures. I know, like, you know, oftentimes I'll go in with what I think in my head is a pretty detailed plan. Um, 20 minutes into it, it just goes right out the window. Huh. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys go through that too. And I feel like, not that there's anything wrong with it, but it's kind of, I think it, a lot of it is because it's, it can be harder to stick to your plan. You know? Yeah. Like, yep. That's when it kind of comes down to like that whole like baking um like recipe thing where you kind of have to hit all your marks right on the first try um otherwise it's you know you're just gonna lose especially with like the reductive carving like this where you can't really go back you can't i mean you can but you don't necessarily want to add back onto it it's really just reductive um so it's kind of like if you you know go in too deep or Cut something off you didn't want to your your plan is kind of you know up in the air a little bit yeah that's when you redirect though i think we both had that happen to us in during live carbs especially where you can't everybody's standing over your shoulder and you can't even go oh shit <laughs> <laughs> really keep it all inside be like nope totally meant to do that yeah. well, i meant to take a huge chunk out of that eyeball right there on purpose yeah yeah i mean i think i think yeah. that's like a whole other level of expertise is when it's like doing a portrait or just, you know, it being inspired by a portrait. That's it. You just said it right there. Everything you should do should be inspired by, but end up being your own. Right. Like trying to get somebody's likeness is very, very difficult. Oh, yeah. But I, but I also think that when you do that, you make your version of something that of the picture, basically sure, right. that become that yeah. becomes your, that's what an artist is. Yeah, I, mean, I think there's there's totally totally value to that, um, for sure. You know, and that's that's what I do ninety five percent of the time. Mm -hmm. um, is I'm I'm trying to do something that comes out a certain way. Uh, maybe it's not exactly how I was imagining it, but I'm usually happy with it. Um, but you know, in those instances where the likeness is important, that extremely difficult to execute well yeah um, and that's you know when we look at you know some of the guys that we we know are elite elite sculptors that's what they're good at yeah so, so 
John, can yeah. people recognize your your art? They they know you did it. Maybe. Um, I, 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 can see, I know pumpkins. What, I know which pumpkins you've done. Yeah. I could tell you a style. What, what, what about you, Paul? Can people know your I like, style? Well, I know. Well, I, but, I, I, but, like, I, but, but can Matt, Matt can see your, like that Paul did that one. Well, they all look like him. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It's, it's sad, but true. I did but, used to use a mirror. Remember that? that I would just primarily use a mirror. That's what I did. <laughs> and I would go in and just say, all right, so this one's going to be mad or this one's going to be happy or whatever. The ex I would only choose an expression. That's how I would just try and keep it generic. And then, um, yeah, they all started looking like me. So I had to pick another, uh, <laughs> another way of doing them. When I was very young, my uh, we used to do art and my mom would come in. It was it was maybe like sixth grade. Uh, uh, Matt might remember Miss Bosco. Yeah. There you go. So um, everybody did an art project on the wall. And my mom went up and picked mine out right away. She knew exactly because uh, she knew what style I did and all this stuff. So I, I think that that's what it becomes. It becomes like a very recognizable style, but like how you get there, it's like, it's, it, it, it's like a minefield, you know, you walk through it. Then all of a sudden it's like, okay, this is what something that I did, but it's recognizable because you did it in your style, what you mm -hmm. kind of default to. Right, you really like, don't. Like I'm noticing the differences in between all three of your styles. Yeah. Oh. Your favorite. <laughs> no, don't, I know I won't do that because Matt you just are... Matt just don't be mad when he says John. All right, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. It happened. Well, you guys all like uh, uh, Ray Villafane, so I'll just say him, and you guys all be happy. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, see the balls to Ray. Ray no, I mean, like I, I mean, I admire the directions that you take, which, which is an, on a higher level than than anything that I could say is my favorite. Good answer. Very, Thank very you. good Thank answer. Very that. diplomatic, very right? Very my, diplomatic. My when you're asking about technique, John, I, my I think my my thing, I have something that pops into my head, and today was glasses. I just was like, I haven't done anybody with like sunglasses on before, or or you know, I've done. Years ago, I did a Gandhi that ended up looking more like, because um, it's a big round face and Gandhi was kind of gaunt. Um, so he looked a little bit more like Teddy Roosevelt when he was all done, but yeah. he did have round glasses. So I got I was more proud of the glasses than I was the actual thing, but this is like five, six years ago. Um, but yeah, and, and that's really where the whole thing started. And so I just mapped that out first and then the rest was just, well, I'll make a smile or I'll make this. Or, yeah, so it had no, no uh, no pre-planning at all other than that. But that is pre-planned. I mean, at least you had an idea. I mean, sometimes sure. I'll wake up in the morning and I know when I have to carve that afternoon and I, it's, would you would consider it almost like sculptor block, I guess you would call it. Sure. Where you just cannot find something that is giving you inspiration at the moment. Yeah. What do you then, do? What do I do? Yeah. What do you do in that case? Normally I carve a face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I know, what do you do to get over the block? I guess is my point. I was gonna say I, I usually take a picture of uh, my fiance. <laughs> sometimes, yeah, that sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll take a picture of the kids or something. Just be, I'll be like, make a face, yeah, and then, and then just start with that, and then maybe that gets the uh, creative juices flowing. Yeah. Huh. Okay. They can't all be home runs, you know. Yep. I, I'll, I'll actually go troll Instagram sometimes for some of my favorite artists just to see if there's some some expression or some face or something that is looking cool to me that day. Uh, that sometimes has worked, you know, yeah, I've, that works. I do that too. Um, I've, I've like copied it several, um, like I did the, uh, well, I remember that Jonathan saying, Jonathan, yeah, uh, sculpture I did. That was a lot of fun. That was one of my favorites I've done this year. Um, and simple, just like a squishy face like this. Um, which is kind of like right in my wheelhouse, which is what, kind of why I decided to do it. But um, yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a ton of value to that because it, it takes away the, the whole, um, like translating something into something else. You know, when you're already starting with a three-dimensional sculpture, you know, it's more 
practice, I think, than anything else. It's like mm -hmm. like a master copy of like a famous painting. Yeah, I, I've seen you do that expression a couple of times, and I, I like when you do that expression. That's yeah. your uh, that's that's your go to. If we were talking about your yeah. go to, probably. Yeah. It's a good one. Mine, I I would say, would have to be like a Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah. That's when you like. That's your your go to. Your easier your your easy putt. Not that it's an easy putt. I'm just very comfortable with it. Oh, and okay. John said you do it a little different every time. You're almost refining the um the parts that you like and the parts that you don't like. Huh? Yeah. Well, you know, I like. Say it again. I didn't mean to interrupt you. What were you saying? No, I was just saying if I don't do Frankenstein, I'll try and usually do like a werewolf. And then you get into three hours of doing teeth. And so the whole time you're cursing yourself. Hair. Hair yeah, hair. hair. Right. Hair, exactly. Hair or teeth. And then you're like, what did I get myself into? But it's something that I'm I'm just comfortable doing it. I, I love those just those two characters. But again, that's somebody else's characters. I, I wanna try and create something unique if I can. So Ken McLean uh, commented, "You are all so talented. Thank you for sharing." So that's thank Ken, you. That's, that's Sven Schwein, Ken McLean. That's my buddy from way back. What's up, Kenny? Nice, nice. nice. So we're um, we're impressing all our friends and family, which is uh, a great place to start. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you, can't, if you can't impress your family and your friends, who oh are yeah. Uh, my friends and family sometimes don't even know that I'm even doing live broadcast so <laughs> you have a computer uh, yeah yeah <laughs> when'd you get all rich yeah <laughs> are, they, are they from the south <laughs> the dragon yeah the dragon south, arizona i guess that's the south right i was talking to i was talking to somebody the other day about that they were talking about these rednecks in, in the state of washington oh, help me if it wasn't you tell me but um we were talking about how rednecks are literally in every state. Yep. There, there, there may be a concentration in certain states, but you cannot go. I mean, there's rednecks in Arizona, like there's rednecks in Idaho, or there's rednecks yeah. in Montana, there's rednecks in New Jersey. There's, I mean, I. Oh yeah. yeah. How about it, this? There's rednecks in Alaska. I've been there. Oh wow. Really? Yes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, not not. I'm not saying rednecks are bad. I'm just saying that when you know you can you get some. You get some folks in every and there's no like there's no state that's immune from um, you know that kind of yes. and it, you know yeah people are people so why that's should it. it be oh listen I to you you and I should get along so the entire time don't get us kicked off of YouTube now <laughs> yeah yeah exactly they're taking over the world anyway so let's just 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 be happy about it yeah oh so Matt you weren't here because you um. You had the uh, Commodore 64 problems. Yeah, yeah. But um, we were talking about how the Pentagon just released the the uh, the paper saying that they found alien spacecraft. Oh my and god! Yeah. Right, oh, it's awesome. you like right around the corner from Area 51. Yeah, we can see it from my backyard. But we don't, we're not allowed in it. Um, <laughs> no, no. It. I, I saw that, and I don't know how credible is that. I mean, what, are they showing pictures? Is it national news, or is it just something that just it's cropped up? No, it it's been on it's been on like the the real media sources. And, uh, aliens are pretty low on the priority list right now. Well, talk about a bait and switch. Try to get you talking about something else. Hey guys, I know there's a pandemic and there's an election and there's all this and that, but guess what? There's aliens. Oh hey hey aliens! We're pulling back the curtain. Look here. See Matt, now you can do your uh, alien sculpture. Pulls it full circle. Very timely. Yeah. Very timely. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Game over, dude. Game over. Game over. Bill Paxson was great, man. That, that guy shouldn't have died. What the hell? There's other yeah. people that should die. They, uh, I carved a couple of Bill Pax Paxton uh, pumpkins. What? You did? Yeah, like a memorial ones. Oh. Who did? Oh, I Are love you that. Yeah. Did you do it as Chet from Weird Science? I was just gonna say that would be a great pumpkin. That would be yeah. a great Hubbard squash. Like a headshot of his. Yeah. If you did a Hubbard squash, that's pretty much the shape of the thing that he was, right? Yeah. <laughs> that would be dynamite. <laughs> Don't anybody steal that. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> oh, we'll we'll censor this out. Oh, sh oh it's live. Darn, darn it. Right. I, I overdubbed. I'm like, since when do I have a West Coast accent? <laughs> 
<laughs> we we actually just recently watched that movie. I got three daughters, and and they're they're now in their mid late teens, and so I'm figuring that they can see really bad '80s movies now, just like I had to. Yeah. And I thought that that movie, because I hadn't seen it for 20 years, I thought that movie would hold up because it was funny back then, you know, with Anthony Michael Hall. And my God, was I wrong? That was you just, didn't like it. I, it just there, there was the funny parts. I mean, there's like if you could just get the Chet part, you know, yeah. where he's tapping yeah. him on the head with the gun and you get yeah. the part, you know, where, you know, wearing underwear on the head and stuff like that. I mean, dude, nothing man. beats. Nothing beats. Yo, girls, check us out. <laughs> and they <panic. laughs> That may have triggered so many pantsings across the country. <laughs> Do, well, well, do not watch Teen Wolf. It does not hold up oh, in today's climate. Trust me, the, proof, the first on. 30 proof. minutes does not hold up whatsoever. <laughs> That's great. It is a wow. Me Too moment. Oh, oh, oh okay. Got it, got it, okay. Yeah, it is not good. No. So the, the part where he becomes like a furry <laughs> dude playing basketball, that's like, that's an hour, at least an hour in the movie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do not watch it with your girls. It would be bad. Thank you. Oh, my God. Such a great Say that again? Do we have a timer going? Do we have a limit? We have about uh, a little Eight, over 15 minutes? minutes to go. Okay. 15 minutes. All right. So carve fast. Yeah. So stock carving, would you? Okay. Okay, now I'm at a point where Paul, guys, I need, your, I need your advice. Do I do I give this guy keep him with sunglasses like this, where they're like lenses? Yep. And and, and really get the face figured out because I, I still have some time. I have to still put into this thing before it's like coming around. But or or do I create eyes behind here and as if and then they're just clear lenses that way? What would your I would leave the glasses as is and just yeah. really, really dive into like the flesh of the face there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd undercut the glasses more and maybe yeah. even go a little bit deeper on the lenses. Oh, really? But okay. They look awesome. They're, they're super symmetrical. I think it looks really cool. Thank you should you. put a saxophone in his hand, cut the nose off, and call him a California raisin. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, no, two little arms right here and two little legs out. Yeah, at the bottom. That'd be sweet. No, I like the sunglasses. Yeah, I okay. think that the, the flatness of the glasses is important. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the advice, fellas. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for asking. You know, nobody hey. ever asked me anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you really want to get it. All, all, all I get. Yeah. Although I make a lot of dinner, so never mind. <laughs> So I did. I did want to ask about something of uh, John's while we have a few more minutes. Yeah. So um, this right here, this is a really cool piece that I saw. Oh, I like that. I love that one. Oh yeah, yeah. So was it was this like a like a half sculpture or how like how did you approach this or did you frame it just for no reason or was it was it there a reason to it? Yeah. So um, you know, I work at a frame shop. We had that frame lying around, so that was we did that more of like as kind of like a fun, almost like promotional thing. Um, I had carved, I think it was like the day before Halloween, I had carved that one, the skull, um, and brought it into work. And we just did like a little photo shoot with it. Um, so. That's super cool. Yeah. And uh, I saw, I saw, I also saw this painting as well. Yeah. yeah. This was um, very yeah. cool too. I, I, I don't remember what we talked about. I studied painting um, in school at Mass Art. That's that was kind of like kind of the beginning of. Uh, oh boy! How many dogs do you have? It's not mine. <laughs> That's Matt. Matt. He muted. He muted. <laughs> We're just gonna call him Maddie mute for now on. <laughs> There must have been a um, what are those pigs called? What are those ha things? The javelinas. Javelinas. There must have been a pack of javelinas. Yeah. yeah. Either a bunny or a javelina must have gone behind the house or something. So <laughs> still going nuts. Sorry. 
I'll, I'll Matt mute it. Matty mute. I think he blew up John as well. Oh, John froze up. Wow. Stop. The technical time. difficulties. Am I back? You You're are. back. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, so I studied painting in school. Um, so this was actually a large, pretty large scale. I think it's approximately four by six feet. Wow, really? Yeah. And okay. that, was, that was for a show all about the Boston Marathon. I think it was the five-year anniversary of the uh, bombing. Um, and so I was invited to participate in a show all about um, – Really, the, just the Boston Marathon, and um, you know all sorts of aspects of it. Um, and I kind of chose to explore, uh, like the kind of the less glorified um, portion of running, like that. Mm. You know, it's like you know in the middle of winter when you need to get ready for a marathon in the spring. This is exactly where you're running. You're running in a cold garage where you need a space heater. You know, and it's not very, uh, um, it's not really an extravagant setting, but I think that's just what a lot of people go through. Um, yeah, it's not very glamorous training for anything. Yeah, so that's what that was about, um, called The Cave. How interesting. That I, I'm so glad I asked you about that because I would have never gotten that explanation or that, that vision into this. But you're absolutely right. Um, uh, Paul knows my superhero identity. Um, yes, tell him. Uh, in, you're a runner. Uh, I'm not a runner. I was actually a professional wrestler at one point. Oh wow! So um, yeah. So uh, but this is. I always said we. I used to work out seven days a week for about ten to do ten minutes of work. Yeah. So. This is exactly a really, I can really connect with this because it's right. It's like you have to, I, I did it in my garage. I had a elliptical. I had, you know, a, uh, I had to run on a treadmill. I had my weights in there. It was all in my garage. So I can really actually relate to this. And I'm just like, so I, I wanted to know more about this. So it was actually funny that this kind of comes back. But the space heater tells you where you're at because I wouldn't have done that out here. You would have done that back east or Midwest or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's fascinating. Thank you. Very man. cool. Appreciate that. It's one of my favorites, John, actually. Yeah, thanks. I had a lot of fun with that one. I love that description. Thanks, man. That's really cool. Oh, so Matt actually sent me a painting. Don't get jealous, but uh -oh. of one of my favorite characters of all time from the Howard Stern show. Yes. Okay. Ooh, that's yes. Thank you, Mr. Harper. I really enjoyed it. Of course. Some great memories of the show oh and great memories of the time we got to hang out with him and had to pick him up at his parents' house in Fall River. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Back up. Back yeah, up. He, he, met, he met and spent the day or, or however long. Oh, with he spent the night. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. We were driving him home. Not that night. Oh, my God. You used to be awesome. able to hire him. to. He would sing Rolling Stones karaoke at bachelor parties. Now, and the capsule party was in Malden, but oh he lived God. in Fall River and he didn't have a car. So he was like, I'll do it, but somebody's got to come pick me up. So me and my buddy Tony went down and picked him up. <laughs> I have so I, many questions. I could hear him saying, <laughs> I live in Fall River and right we're not live anymore. Fall River. I live in Fall River. Fall oh River. My God. Next to Bridgewater. Who's next to Bridgewater? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So what, what year was this? Uh, uh, 1995. Wow, I, would say 95. I was 1995, Paul. You were minus probably two years old, I would say. <laughs> no, I was I was a two year old. You were two uh, years I old. <laughs> Drinking with Hank, Hank, the uh, angry drunken dwarf at that age. My God, I. He was three I taller. You were two. Yeah. Oh yeah, Matt, Joe, Matt and I were 25. Guy. <laughs> that's crazy well, one of my favorite uh favorite parts about um carving with paul was when people would ask where we were from i was living in massachusetts at the time um especially when we were in chicago they'd be like oh you're both from massachusetts um and it wasn't it was somewhat frequently where they would ask if we were related so i would tell everyone that paul was my dad 
<laughs> and it was funny because everyone just believed it. <laughs> like seriously? I know. God. Dude, how does that make you feel there, Paul? Um, not particularly awesome, but uh, <laughs> my my son was really tall. So that's that's you know <laughs> and he was really good at carving pumpkins, so yeah, good genes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. you passed on good genes to your son. Nice. That's what I did. Okay, so back to Hank. <laughs> so he was a really good guy. I honestly, he we had, he was he was a really good guy to hang out with. That's amazing. He, the one thing that I loved is he loved rock and roll trivia, and he was yeah. super good at it. And you should have heard him. He, he he knew every single word to every single Rolling Stone song that was played. It's, he's the best. Yeah. He was. He's great. My God, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I know. I I am one step closer to someone who know who knew Hank, the angry drunken dwarf. <laughs> yes, we um landed. I'll show you. I have a great picture of me and my buddy Tony sitting on a couch with him That's from that night. It's funny. Phenomenal. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big um, Eric the actor fan. I'm a I, I high pitch Eric. Oh, Eric, which one? Uh, high pitch Eric too. I like him, but but um, but Eric the actor, um, uh, to be politically correct as the his name, but uh, he would I I could listen. I li literally listened to clips of him all day. I've listened for years. I could I actually have his whole archive of every show he's ever been on so every segment so yeah. i listen to it all the time yeah it's, kind of, it's, it's a bit of a sickness at this point but but hank i loved hank so much and you know just the way he drank it was like there was not he wasn't long for this world yeah well gosh i don't want to uh I'll, I'll tell you right now it was real because he got into my car and was like is it okay if i drink in the back seat and he had a bottle of grape mad dog 2020 like a uh, what's it a fifth like the big one yeah and he drank it like it was kool-aid <laughs> it was almost half gone by the time we got to where we were going it was like wow and i mean he had his issues but he was a really good dude god bless him he's awesome <laughs> he was awesome i, I actually I, feel, I still have an autographed picture somewhere too so how did you contact him? Uh, my buddy Tony reached out at the height of the show, reached out to his manager just because we knew he lived somewhere in Mass. And um, he was like, yeah, he'll he'll do he'll do the show. You got to come get him, though. He doesn't have a license. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> just a happy accident. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I guess a lot of those guys did those type of appearances. Right, that's how they made their money. Yeah, I think Beetlejuice and oh, he did it forever. Yes. He got sick or whatever. Yeah, he is he's been he's been off the show for quite a while, and they made it seem like he was kind of on his uh, not his deathbed, but not not in well in good health. Yeah, recently. So, not he had a lot of issues to begin with, I believe, too. Right? Was that he had a lot of health issues? I he think. did. He did. Yeah, so. visible ones. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. Yeah. But meanwhile, like uh, Jeff the Drunk and High Pitch Eric, they'll live forever. Yeah. They're still around, those guys. <laughs> They're still around. That's they won't. Not... Yeah. Still around. All right. So we have a, like a little over five minutes left. So um, right. you want to go around the room and kind of show? Like, so I'll start with Paul. Like, you can show. Yeah, do me last. All right. Yes. All right, so I just I got a lot of work to do on if I'm going to make them anything special, but that's my offering for tonight. I don't know. It's pretty pretty cool, Paul. I don't. I, yeah. So you, how much how much do you have left with that? Um. Well, after I throw it in the garbage, probably uh, not much longer after that. <laughs> yeah, I could spend more time with it after it's in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's harder to it's harder to carve when it's in the trash. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm gonna see how far I can throw it. <laughs> I can't you know, and, and people people will look at that and go you can't throw that away it's beautiful I can't believe you even said that but I completely agree that it's a piece of crap no no <laughs> <laughs> you're <all the> <laughs> so I, I completely feel what you're feeling because if, if there's something that you don't like about it 
there's almost nothing you can do to to bring it back to now all of a sudden you like it. So I I commiserate with you, brother. Thanks, thanks, brother. I ain't coming out of the booth. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Good John? So this Wait. is what I've got going so far. Um, yeah, I feel like if I had to give it a percentage, I'm probably like sixty to seventy percent done. Okay. Um, this is kind of like I'm really right in the phase I was talking about where like you really need to spend most of your time on just like the general forms. Um, you know, I could like if I wanted to kind of go in and like cut some like deeper slits in the eyes and like in between mm -hmm. all the creases. But I feel like that the, the shapes of the forms aren't quite there yet. Um, so I think I'm going to keep noodling it around noodling away at this for another, you know, half hour, uh, 45 minutes, uh, before I really go in and drop some of those like dark, dark shadows. Um, feels okay. Feels okay. So, Can so I go ahead, go ahead, Matt. Actually, oh. I, it was me actually. I, oh, sorry. I just wanted to ask, I want to say that, um, how do you feel about putting another face on top of that? Of this guy? Yeah. Cause he's got that squished face. It almost looks like there's room to put like something that's making that face squish, like and just another face with that mean expression looking down or something. Like give it like, almost like a headache. Or yeah. he's got like a pimple on his forehead that's got a face on it. <laughs> Wouldn't be not that I want to give you three more hours of work, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New house and trying to move in. Right. Carrie's in the background just staring at him, like wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. come on, man. Yeah. No more um, faces. <laughs> I can my mind. My, I gotta get, my, get to get my lighting right, but um, for this guy, I'm kind of, I probably from percentage wise, I got another twenty percent left to go. But I'm gonna do more on the glasses, kind of um, get a lot of the face expressions detailed out. I really haven't been using my knife very much, which help, helps bring out a lot of the detail out. So I'll do that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, I, I guess this guy's kind of a Chad. He's kind of got that beard. He's got. A little bit of a flat top going on. You guys inspired me with uh, um, you know, the, the Bill Paxson discussion, so I figured you know, let's give him a flat top. But uh, yeah, he's coming along. I mean, that thing looks just like you, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> it does it does? Well, the uh, Jim Jim also said uh, Chet with the flat top or Chet as the big pizza blob. That's what he wanted to see. Oh, uh, from baseball. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, he's that'd be best. awesome to do a, t a two and one. <laughs> like have have like you were saying well, the two faces you know, on there. Now you know what your first carving is going to be. Oh Jesus! Why? That's it. You, Listen, go big or go you're, home. You're throwing me in the deep end. That's yeah. it. Now you got to learn to swim somehow. Agreed. Agreed. You know I'll do you, it right. You, 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 only, you only get a toothpick and bobby pin to carve with. <laughs> yeah, hey, Maddie, yeah. Maddie, did you glue that nose on before we wrap it up? Did you glue that nose? Yeah, I did. So it, it's it, it's a different piece. Uh, I made the mistake of carving it out of a different um oh and you get the different color i, oh, I did the same. Slightly different color so i'm not happy with it at all but you know once you look at it from the front it, it it's okay but this uh this ridge is, is almost impossible to fix i'm gonna have to do some, you some know what you, do is you should make friends with someone who knows a little bit about photoshop and they could probably help you with that oh yeah if only he knew somebody that was really good with uh graphics programs no. oh, no. Uh, yeah, you guys, if you do, please send them my way. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, if it's I did, my, my, I, I've, I've only been doing it since 1991. So, uh, oh, I born yet. yeah, so I'll find you somebody, Matt. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. You guys. You guys. So we got one minute. Um, the only thing I would, Mickey, I know sometimes you, you preempt us and say you want to plug anything. The only thing I want to say is, a big thank you to to John. Um, it's really great having a, a, a multi-talented artist like him on here, a painter, someone who can see 3D and carve subtractively and everything, and just a, a good all-around guy. So big thank you to you, sir. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a ton of fun. Uh, I would love to come back and do this again. Of course, man. Of course. Love to have you. Yeah, this, is, this has been a blast, and it's it's getting easier every week. Uh, to just to have a conversation and see some of the beautiful artwork. Uh, this is where you can follow carvers and creators. Uh, you can also follow uh, just John Davis on Instagram 
as well. Uh, Paul, do you have anything that you wanted to plug? Yeah, I want to plug the Balcony Chat of Podcast tonight. Oh, That's wow. Cool. Love it. What is that? Balcony? That's my cousin's podcast. He does all the Boston sports. He's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty great podcast. I think everybody should follow it. I'm on it. So what, what, what does he talk about? Bruins, Celtics, Red Sox. You know, it's, it's 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 really interesting right now with all the stuff going on with the pandemic. He's got some pretty interesting topics and some really cool guests. He's had a couple of he's had a couple of Bruins on. So right on. He's, he's got it going on, that kid. I'll have to uh, reach out to him for the beer baseball blog. I think you should. Definitely. I think it would be a good idea. Definitely. Well, I'm definitely interested in that. Uh, Matt, did you you uh, you wanted to thank John? Uh, John, did you have anything that you wanted to plug as well? Um, I mean, I think my, my Instagram is really where I try and post the most, uh, most of my work. Um, yeah. No, I mean, so the dog, more javelinas, more javelinas. Oh, and next week, next week, uh, we have yes. fun as well. Uh, Lenny Calvin's coming on another great, uh, and we actually, without spilling too many beans, we're getting a bunch of good lineups, including some pretty amazing guests. So, uh, um, beyond beyond just the, the silliness of, uh, of of my carving, They're, these people are out of this world. So I'm uh, I'm just pleased that we're getting the traction we are, and just a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. This, we've been doing it a month already. Where, where did the time go, right? Wow. And it looks like the time has expired. That's where we know. Yeah. That's a good point. So August sixth is our next show, correct? Yes, that yes, next, yes, that's next Thursday with Lenny Calvin. That's Ooh. awesome. Big guest. Uh, can't wait. So thank you, John, for joining us today. Matt and Paul, I mean, I, I love coming on every week. Thank you so much for showing us all your talents. And uh, we will see you next week on Carvers and Creators. Thank you for joining. Good night. Thanks, guys. Bye, Thanks, guys. Man. So much.